It's my feel good show. Call us on your cell phone. Culinary hotline bling. That can only oh, mean welcome to it, the culinary hotline bling. Ding, ding, ding. That time of the week, my favorite time of the week, Peter and Anel are here to take on your culinary conundrums. And so you know what to do. You want to give us a call on 021-430-9881. Sipelele. How are you guys doing? Sipelele is very nice. Sipelele. Sipelele. <laughs> I love that. Uh, have you guys had a good week so far? Absolutely. Fantastic. All right, let's have a quick look at the questions that came in. Uh, one from Lisa Marie Mare. Ooh, like a, says, how do you make uh, or cook the perfect salmon steak? Lisa Marie has never, ever made one before. The um, perfect salmon steak. Well, I, I would say keep the, uh, keep the skin on. Okay. okay? So you, you'd buy like a, a filleted uh, piece of salmon. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't use local because that's going to be trout and not salmon. It's oh. not going to be the same. So you need to get either Norwegian, Scottish, or uh, Canadian salmon, which okay. is av available at Woolworths or anywhere like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and then what you do, the important thing, whenever you're cooking any protein, so we're going to take the skin side first and put that down into a non-stick pan. Yes. Okay, with a little bit of spray and cook or butter. Leave that on the skin side until the skin crisps up. And then what you'll start seeing is the meat changes from pink to white. And you can see it coming up. And as it goes to about a third of the way, Flip it over. Yes. Only give it about a minute on the bottom. A lump of butter, squeeze of lemon juice, salt and pepper into the oven for about two, three minutes and... Okay. It won, you, you still want that centerpiece just being pink. Yes. When you, when you do that and flip it around, I'm always scared that because like you, you, you allow the skin to crisp up, right? So it means it moves easier from the pan. When you flip it and only, only give it such a short time, won't that meaty part of the top stick? No, not at all, okay. not at all. Remember, your pan's hot enough. Yes. And you always, I know I've told you this so many times, you're probably sick of me saying it, <laughs> but you always put presentation sides down first so that the okay. pan's nice and clean. So whichever side you're going to use first, that, that the customer's going to look at, or, the, or your guests, make sure that goes down first so nothing gets stuck, stuck to it or whatever. And then yes. You, the bottom, it doesn't really matter. Okay, well, there you have it, Lisa Marie. And I use a non-stick pan and just put the skin on the non-stick and the, it, 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 it um, excretes natural oil. Yeah. Oh. Eventually, the oil of the, of the, um, the, fish of itself. the salf, yeah. salmon itself crisps up yeah, the this, skin. Okay. It is There's a new thing now what yeah. people are doing in, in some of your trendy restaurants. They're taking that salmon, taking the skin off, cook yeah. the salmon, and then they take that piece of skin, spray and cook it, into an oven or onto a fire oh. and it actually crisps up into like a, a beautiful disc mm. and then you place that sort of an angle or whatever so it just takes now it to another. Now that's cooking with presentation in mind. Okay, great stuff. Lisa Marie, do try it out at home and then uh, let us know how it goes. Send us a picture. How about this one? Rulani Livingston says here, how do we cook chicken strips? Because my uncle likes them very, very much. Likes to buy them at the supermarket and uh, then they taste very, very nice. So let's talk about the perfect way of pre uh, preparing uh, chicken strips. It's such an easy thing to do mm -hmm. with a breast of chicken or any part of the chicken actually not with a wing though that's that's something else mm -hmm. but what I do is just you have your little chicken strips and what I normally do I cut it against the grain of the chicken yeah because then the grains are shorter and they break easier and it's softer oh, so okay. that for me is one thing yeah so is that from top to bottom that is from side to side so hold it. So, the so, grain, so there's the breast. The grain, so you go the grain there. is normally like that. Long ways, so right? The grain is in the long. Right. So I cut it like that. There we go. Okay. So they're shorter. Okay. So they they softer. And then and whatever you marinated in would kind of seep in yes, there. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. So just now we're going to use an egg. And then we're using this clover lactose free for people that lactose intolerant. Mm -hmm. You use a bit of milk. Mm -hmm. You mix it together. I will add some seasoning. You can either add it in here or in your crumbs. Mm -hmm. Salt and pepper in your crumbs. And then you just dip it. Dip it and crumb it. And then there you fry you it. You can deep fry it or you can bake it in the oven mm. for, for about a few minutes. And it's easy as that. How do you tell when it's right when it's in the oven? I think just a few just, minutes just and when it's golden brown. brown. Yeah. yeah, and I think it goes very quickly when it's by yeah. then and Klein sticky stuff. Okay. Okay. And just, just on that, if uh, the, who was the one who asked the question? So this was uh, Rulani. Rula, Rulani. Yes. Yeah. Make sure, and this is where a lot of chefs go wrong, season your chicken and yeah. season your batter. Okay. So that you're not just getting the flavor of the, you need the chicken to bounce out, and uh -huh. you need the crumbs to bounce as well. There you have it. And you okay. can add lovely flavoring to mm. your paprika, mm. chilies, yeah. anything and to I, your... I actually like using... Uh, broken up cornflakes as opposed to bread crumbs. Ah. Okay, I'll tell you what, really you carry nice. on doing that. We're going to put that in, into the oven very shortly and enjoy it at the end of the show. But meanwhile, give us a call on 021-430-9881 for the Culinary Hotline Bling! Ding, ding, ding! It's my feel-good show. Call us on your cell phone. Culinary Hotline Bling! 
back again with Peter and Anel outside for this Wednesday edition of the Culinary Hotline Bling. Ting, ting, ting. You know how it works. Absolutely amazing sunshine. Love, I mean, look at the view we've got going on here. There's it's, no wind today. <laughs> thank goodness for that. Uh, you give us a call on 021-430-9881. We take your calls and your questions as you feed them through to us on Facebook as well. Let's take one that came from uh, Rose Gitantongo, who said here, um, good morning, Espresso. How can I make homemade cream cheese and how long can I keep it for? Yeah. Homemade cream cheese. Okay. So easy. Okay. It's, it's, you, we are using today a Mazi full cream. Good old South African favorite. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then you just pour it in a little cloth. What do you mean? Cloth in English? Muslin. Muslin. cloth. So where do you get Muslin cloth from? You can put it in the Any material shop. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's you can cheap. also use like a thinnish dish cloth, a clean one. You yeah, know, one that you don't use to wipe the dishes with. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so you hang this overnight in the fridge. Okay, hold on. Just, just show us what you've yeah. done there. So you. So, and then this is the water. Like, call, this is Vai Basis yeah. that's left over normally. Oh, so is that with, with, what's her name? Little Curds, curds and Whey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll remember the nursery so right later that's on. your curve. Yes. Ah! Peter, can you have a little bit of a Sorry, man. Sorry. Yes, we're talking, not paying yeah, attention. Yeah, I forgot that we're all listening for you. Okay, then we're going to open this up. Little Miss Muppet sat on the tuffet Look eating how beautiful her. it oh, is. Oh, my word. Wow. Look at that. Mm. All and right? Then, and then you can roll it like any cream cheese. I want you to taste this, um, cat. Okay. Well, you're not so going to season it first. Yeah, I can't. So this is... Fresh cream cheese as it would have come yeah. from. Yeah. Yeah. You can season it with herbs, what? fresh herbs, yeah. yeah. What? And, and the thing as well is, what, what, um, I mean, how much cheaper is it Ooh. than actually. Yeah. Cause actually. Because I mean, cream cheese is a pretty pricey thing. Yeah. And, and then, then you, you can route it in a log if you want to. Look at you, Arnel, so fancy. Like Viet. Uh -huh. so sweet. Yeah. And you can put it in the fridge overnight. Om a bit longer, om a bit thicker to rock. Yeah. To firm up a bit. And by the time your friends come yes, around you can and you serve them. it, there you have your crackers, yeah. Yeah. your cheese, cream cheese, spice. And you can use black pepper, pink peppercorns. At middle, you can just lighten this thing and fresh herbs. This is like a beautiful base with a bit of acidity for anything. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. Well done. Okay, Very so cool. there you have it, uh, Rose. That was your question answered. Then we take a question from Chaldine Kaline Johannes. She says, hey, guys, I have a question for one of the chefs in the studio. I'd love to know how I can go about making my own taco shells. Please help. Okay, um, it's, quite a, it's quite a hard one. Firstly, we're not in Mexico. <laughs> uh, would you need a specific machine if no. you really want to do it yourself? No, you don't need a machine. What okay, you so you can actually do it. You can, but the problem is you need masa flour. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. M-A-S-A. Mm -hmm. And to get it is like finding gold in South Africa. Yeah. Okay, so, so there are very few retailers that actually sell. I think there's only one, and, mm. and it's, a, it's a retailer that uh, sells to like chefs and restaurants mm. and whatever. So I don't think Joe Blog's public can actually walk in there and get okay, it. Okay, okay. But I, I would assume they have it. All right. But the better thing to do is you take your tortilla. Mm. If you go to a, a supermarket, uh, one, whichever one, mm. and you buy the little ones, Okay. A little you, tortilla. Little tortillas, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. little wraps. Mm -hmm. little, you take those, and then there's two ways of doing it. A lot of chefs will put, pop it into some hot oil, yeah. start frying it, and as it um, like gets golden brown on the one side, flip it over, give it about a minute or so, and then they hold it with a tong. And, oh, then they, wow. and then they crisp, so, so that it crisps up into that mm. taco that, shape. Yes. But the easy way that I've found over the years is you take uh, a, a baking tray, yeah. then you put one of those racks on, you know, the yeah. um, metal racks, yes. and you actually bend them like that. Yeah. So I hang it there. Mm -hmm. A little bit mm. of butter on it, on, yeah. on it, put it over it and put it into the oven yeah. for about s seven, eight minutes. And you get the most beautiful taco without any worry. Like 180 crunchy. degrees about, no, Pete? Yeah, about 180, 180 yeah. degrees, yeah. That sounds I just good. hang sounds them good. in the oven over my rack. The same, on yes. two, 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 Brilliant. Mm. There you have it. I never knew that you could do it. Well, that's why we have the experts here to help you along. Well, keep uh, keeping, giving us a call on 021-4309-881. We'll be back again with the culinary hotline bling. Ting, ting, ting. It's my feel-good <laughs> Call us on your cell phone. Culinary hotline bling. That can only mean one Welcome thing. Welcome back. This is your feel-good breakfast show express on SABC3. It is time for the culinary hotline bling. Ting, ting, ting. ting. <laughs> <laughs> we basically have some, some of our crew at the back of the city like, ting, ting, ting. <laughs> <laughs> that was my 
I I saw you there. I saw you. Anyway, back here. Uh, we're taking your calls on 0214309881. Let's quickly reflect on this question from Mamole Fe Mufuking, who asked us this on Facebook. I've been trying to make melting moments, but the patterns keep melting away in the oven. What am I doing wrong? Firstly, what are melting moments? It's a cookie, a lovely soft cookie that melts in your mouth. And the reason why it melts in your mouth is because it's got about a third corn flour. Yeah. Okay. And that's what makes it so special. And that's when you put it into your mouth, it almost like, it's, it's like butter, it just okay. like melts away. So that's where the name comes from. Yeah. I think I know what you're talking we, we just never called it that when yeah. we grew up. Like yeah. the Melting moments is what it's called now. But, right. but literally the corn flour is what, what gives it that beautiful yeah. melting effect. And so the question then is about the patterns going away when it's in the oven and what's yeah. going on, what's wrong? Normally you can pipe it, I've just rolled the balls now, but normally you, um, the pattern is just like a fork like that. That yeah. is a pattern of the melt yes. mode. But what you do, you put your fork in some corn flour. Oh, so more corn flour. Or, or even block. pasta sugar. Just okay. to coat and it. you just do that. Now what and does that do when you do that? That mark the um, the, the fork loss, yes. so it doesn't stick to the thing, and you can actually go a bit deeper with it. So it makes the fork go deeper, and then, yeah. But the, the actual corn flour itself does it create some kind of hardened crust? No, so it's that for it the doesn't fork, okay, so, so the, the fork doesn't get stuck in there. You can actually do it, so it. Want anders gaan jy net so gaan, dan gaan jy fork vast. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. Fast. Yes, fast. So you do this, and then so you, you actually give it a. Good squeeze. A good squeeze. Dan gaan I definitely yeah. And also, I think when you start and make sure that your your dough that has been in the fridge, yes, because that's yeah. also going to help it hold together when you yes. bake it. Yes. Okay. So as simple as that. So you said, cast the sugar, corn flour. You can use as anything to just coat, uh, coat, coat the yeah. fork yeah. so it yeah. doesn't do it. Um, that's interesting. The cast the sugar there. It's going to be lacquer beers. It's going to be lovely. Yeah. It's going to be crisp up well, and sweet. What, what yeah. I normally do with it. Well, I sound like I bake all the time, but <laughs> when I have made these, I would make a flat layer. And then I would make a buttercream icing and I'd do this for the top. So you make it like a proper little cookie. All right. And then you just Ooh, Excellent stuff. I need mm. to get the recipe for that. Hopefully we have one on our website. Uh, a question came in uh, via call from Albertina in Pretoria saying she caught a mackerel fish, freshly mm. caught. Any ideas on how to prepare it, how to make it delicious? Is how she, to give she it online at the moment? Uh, well, that's the story. She caught it. Unfortunately, we lost okay. the line, but that's, that's what happened. So she caught a fresh mackerel and she needs to know what to do with it. Treat it like tuna. Mm. You got to. It's a very oily fish. Okay. Uh, it's a beautiful fish, but if it's overcooked, it's terrible. So I would treat it similar to tuna. It's mm -hmm. a very strong flavor, mm -hmm. like very, strong. very strong flavor. So. Mm -hmm. But it's a beautiful fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think very quickly fry in a pan. I think fillet it. Fillet well, it even properly. Even don't it, where you've got like your little slices, because it's quite a nice shaped fish. Yes. Yeah. And you can actually do what they call like, and it's like little, because the center bones here, and it's just little flat steaks. Okay. A little bit of flour, salt, pepper, yeah. lemon juice, pan fry. Yeah. And I think you can be generous with the lemon juice because it's such a rich, yeah. rich fish. Yes. It needs lemon. When you say it's like tuna, can you have it raw like you have tuna yes, sashimi? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, it's, with a bit of basting big, of your soy sauce. It's a big thing and it's one of the few fish that they, and, and what they do is they keep the skin on, mm. okay, and you actually take salted water, hot water, and you pour it over the skin that it actually tightens it up but it also makes it edible. And oh, then they okay. actually, um, if you look in Japan and that, then they'll take that, that mackerel and it's got the beautiful color of the skin and they would use that as food as on like nigiri or something like yes, that. Yes, so excellent. Yeah, definitely you can. Okay, fantastic. Well, we'll remain uh, open with our lines on 021-430-9881. Next time when we talk about fish, I want to talk about how to debone a fish because there's nothing worse than eating a, be a beautiful, juicy yeah. piece of fish and then like, so, uh, ah. so why don't, why don't uh, next time I'm on, yeah. Let's do it. I'll, can you do that? I'll fill it to head and tail for yeah. you. For Show us how you do it so I can do it at home. Absolutely. Because I like and you, fish. And you know what I'll do as well? And it's one of those fish that I've... It, okay, it's a little bit on the orange at the moment yeah. for, with the sassy, but uh, sole. And people are scared of mm. it. And if you learn how to clean sole, it's yeah. one of the most beautiful fish. All right. Well, stay tuned. We'll be back with the culinary hotline bling. Ting, ting, ting. It's my feel-good Call us on your cell phone. Culinary hotline bling. Woo! Yes, we're back outside. It's a hot day indeed, but we forge on ahead with the culinary hotline bling. <laughs> Stop it. Anel and Peter are here to take on your questions. You know where to call us. 0214309881. Uh, an interesting question came in from Marcelo Rudolf Unaletata on Facebook, who said, Good morning, Espresso. My query and question is, I'm eager to know how to make chocolate, uh, sorry, apple cake. How is ah. that made? Look at that. Piece Gorgeous. Of cake. It looks great. 
Fat so, Peter? so what, what is the complex thing about apple cake? Is it not just like apple pie with an upgrade? Um, it is. It is, is it really? Yeah. It's got a cake batter. Yes. A pie's got a pie batter, like a pie oh, layer. Oh, yes, okay. This What's, is a cake batter. So first thing I noticed is that because of the sun, our, our butter is not at room temperature. It's perfect temperature for this. <laughs> for for, for clipping. So it's butter and icing sugar. Icing sugar. Okay. You cream that. Are you waiting for me, Peter? Yeah. While I'm, okay. This is your recipe, Anel. Oh, really? <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my kids are beating all the art of that. Yeah, okay, this cool. is where you want one of those little. Yes. Oh, those hand mixes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. So you first cream your butter and your sugar, and we're using icing sugar, it works better. I do say that icing sugar is one of the most difficult ingredients to work with only because it takes a lot of patience. Like, even when making um, icing to decorate cookies or cakes with, uh -huh. um, it just takes a while. The amount of water you need to add oh. in. Even now, you kind of see how it takes its time to go around. So you've added uh, butter, icing, sugar, and now eggs. Yeah. And now eggs. So you add all your wet ingredients. Peter, you made a good mark with our arm for Glitz, Peter. Glitz, 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 Probeer hard. Men can't do things to a uh, uh, salad oh, Do I have come a on, come to on. stop on the arm? I do really. I was trying to think of the Afrikaans way. Let's get it. Let's get it. Okay, so okay. how many eggs you got in there? About four, four, four eggs. eggs. Cool. Four okay. eggs. Let's get it. Okay. Okay. And we're going to add this in. Vanilla. So all the wet ingredients. All the wet first. Okay. Okay, and then the dry. He dries, N he buck Knowing that baking is a science no. and when a recipe says do this, you have to do it exactly. Yeah. Um, is it always the case that you're adding dry ingredients together first and wet ingredients together first? Absolutely. Yeah, always the wet ingredients together and then the dry ingredients. Yeah. Except in that part where you added the yeah, ice and sugar. This is still very lumpy because but, we, but we, we don't have a whisk. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just going to put that in. Okay, now my, my little thing on this, like a hint, Oops. is when you make these cakes, yes. is you take your batter you split it in half. I'll come around here, I'm gonna help but you. But I can't forget to be milk by this yeah. bit, it's my fault. Yeah? So you, you make the batter. Split it in half, put yeah. half of into the fridge. Okay. The other half you put into the freezer. Okay. okay. Then what you do is you, like let's say an hour later, you take the one out of the fridge and you line a, a tart cake tin or whatever with yeah. that. You, um, Blind bake it for a little bit, mm -hmm. and then you put your filling, which you've actually cooked on the side, with some nice lemon and and uh, cinnamon and all that kind of stuff on your apples. Mm -hmm. Throw that in, and then when the 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 other piece of your dough is actually frozen, you take it and you grate it over the top. Oh wow! Oh, wow. And that then is it very gives fancy. It, yeah, so it becomes this very crispy. Like it's very top, clever. Yeah, but it's, okay. it's what I would... Excellent. And once you've done this, how do you then get the apple flavour infused in it? I see we've got some, some apples Remember, here. Remember, this, this, this is just the, the, the cake, yes. the tart. So you're going to have a, the whole apple and that's still going to go in the centre of it. So it's okay. a complete mixture yeah. inside it. All right. The, the now... Here. I understand what you want to say. Yeah, the apple is taking a bit of it in. Now you put it in a pan and then you add some on top and then you bake it at 180. Okay. For about an hour. Excellent stuff. Well, there you have it, Marcella. Thank you very much for your creative question and all of your creative questions at home. Of course, send them through to us on our Facebook page. That's Expresso Morning Show SABC3. And of course, also, we'll be back again with these two lovely people for next week's edition of the Culinary Hotline Bling. Ting, ting, ting.